Time to do another Cooper & Company off the cuff. This time we're going to do one of my favorite subjects of all times, Alabama football. Talk with my old buddy, legendary Crimson Tide player, Dennis Holman. Dennis, we almost look like twins. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about the hair or the build or what? Probably the hair. <laughs> More than anything. It's How good are to you? see you, man. I'm doing great. Doing great. Family's doing great, and it's always good to see you. Where's Gloria? Well, I'd see, that's the number one question I get now when I start trying to do these things. Anyway, it doesn't matter if it's this or whatever. Where's your wife? Where's Gloria? <laughs> She's at home, but she said, tell you hello, and the picture of you hooking her is one of her favorites. Showed oh, yeah. it on the show earlier this week. But uh, how's Dennis Holman? Dennis Holman's doing fine, enjoying retirement, and trying to keep up with grandkids and all their activities. It's just amazing. You have a son that lives in Athens, attends was, Lindsay Lane Baptist Church? It does. Matt, my uh, daughter-in-law, Jill, and Sydney and Reed, uh, uh, they're growing up so quickly and in so many activities, it's hard to keep up with that group over there. And then I've got my daughter and husband here that have nine-year-old twins, and they're in South Carolina right now in a Cal Ripken tournament. You know that uh, the pastor at Lindsay Lane is a huge Bama fan. Dusty, Dusty is a great friend and a, just a great guy. Came out of a tough background and the uh, Lord was merciful and, and saved him. And, and, and now he's pastor over there and doing a great job. He does a fantastic, and he's still a big Roll Tide fan. He is that. Before we get started on talking about your career and stuff, let's talk about something that's current right now. Let's talk about Penn State. Did you ever imagine anything like this could be possible in college football? No, not really. And I, I, I tell folks, I, uh, Joe Paterno was a friend of mine. Uh, I played in several uh, all-star games when, uh, uh, after college uh, when they used to have the East-West game and all that. And he, he was coach and uh, super guy, super guy. I just enjoyed being around him. He's done a great job, did a great job over the years. Of course, he's passed away now. But uh, you just, uh, I think if, if Joe... Coach Pye had to do it over again. He would do it a lot differently. Isn't it? But he doesn't. So how do you think he'll be remembered? How, how do you think people should remember Joe Paterno? Well, sadly, I think that this is what's going to be remembered. You know, is is what's happened. Even with all the wins and and everything else, it's a shame that uh, this had to happen like that. And I I know some true football fans probably you're going to see some people that are really stand behind him and and say, well, he just made a mistake, should have brought this out, and, and did He just and made a mistake. The statue will probably come down. Oh, more than likely. that's what they're saying, and that's so sad. Right. It really well, is. I just want to get your opinion on that. Let's move on to some more things, talk about Alabama football. Do you ever think Alabama football will be where it is right now? Well, I, I tell you what, after uh, meeting Coach Saban, several years ago and being around him he he reminds me so much his mood and attitude uh, with with playing and winning and what it takes to do that you know uh, of coach Bryant now I'm not putting him in the same you know category with coach Bryant because he's got several more championships to win before we can do that but you think uh, he'll get there well he's got a good chance at that because I tell you what he, he's a disciplinarian uh, he's a perfectionist uh, although you never reach that, uh, you strive for that, and that's what he preaches all the time. Uh, and he's done a tremendous job. He's attracted a lot of players to Alabama. I mean, we've got players down there now that you're going to see this coming year that you've never heard of. They're that are going to be good players. Than, they're a little bigger than you when you played ball down there. Well, just a little bit. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're taking or what they're on or what they're pumping or whatever, but. Uh, all players are big. When you came out of Muscle Shows to go to play for the Tide, what did you weigh? I weighed 170 pounds. And became an All-American. Well, I was fortunate to do that. And the reason is, that, you know, people say, well, you did a great day. It always comes down to coaching. We had a great coach. I mean, we did it his way or it was the highway. And uh, he made us work hard, brought out the best in us, but also your teammates. You're surrounded. You can't be anything without those guys around you. It's, it's not a me game. It's a we game. Now, back when you were there, freshmen were not allowed to play. Freshmen were not allowed to play, so we played you, three years. You had a guy playing quarterback that made number 12 famous, Joe Willie Namath, my all-time hero. I had the pleasure of interviewing Joe naked one day when he was in Guys and Dolls in Birmingham. Uh, just a super athlete. You never caught a pass from him in a game? Only in practice. Uh, Joe was probably the... 
great, one of the greatest athletes I've ever been around. It wasn't just football. Joe could play basketball. He, could, he was the only guy when I was down there that could dunk a basketball. He could Joe play Namer. baseball. Joe Namer. And I mean up to the elbow. He could do it. And uh, he was just a great athlete. What was it like seeing him as a senior down there? Well, how was he treated, and, and uh, you being a freshman? Well, we, you can tell us. Well, <laughs> freshmen had their own floor, and we were not allowed to go up to the varsity floor there at Paul Bryan Hall. So we, we never really saw him there except for, uh, you know, at meals and things like that, and you were not allowed. In fact, uh, some of the varsity players got Snake and I, we had to do all kind of things for the varsity, you know, freshmen get them to do this thing. So they got us to go up one day. Namath was up in his room asleep. They got Snake and I to go up there, knock on his door, wake him up. And we walk in, just start talking to him. And of course, he said a few choice words and then heard a lot of laughing out in the hall. And there was a bunch of varsity players and he knew they would put us up to it. But boy, we were. <laughs> It scared us to death, but... So he was that... Hey, he had that kind of image. He really did. And, uh, of course, after going to New York and being Mr. New York and Mr. Broadway, you know, I mean, it, it even got bigger. The HBO documentary was fabulous on him. I saw that. I recommend... Didn't see you anywhere. Did, they, <clears throat> did you turn them down? Your agent couldn't get enough money or what? It wasn't enough. Uh, you know, I, I wanted a little bit more. And, uh, but anyway, I, I'll say this, Jamie. Anyone should see that. Oh, yeah. I, I recommend that children uh, should see that. I get chill bumps watching. I, I'm telling you, he went through some good times, went through some great times, went through some bad times, and I think uh, athletes uh, and families need to watch that. All right, Namath, you never got to play with him, but you played with Steve Sloan and then later Snape, Stapler. Kenny Snake Stapler, everybody knows, one of the best-known athletes of all time. You wore number 25. What made you so good? Didn't Ray Perkins play with you too? Ray was on the other side, and uh, <clears throat> I think that's what helped me a lot. Uh, we had, you know, fairly good receivers on each side, and, and uh, two great quarterbacks, and Steve Sloan and, and uh, Kenny Stabler, and of course I roomed with Kenny for. Yeah, how was that? Uh, I'm just glad was to be here. Was he here as John. wild then as he was later in life? <laughs> you can tell us. Well, he <laughs> he was a free spirit. Let me put it that way. And, and I'm just glad to be here with you today, you know, after going was through that <laughs> We did some crazy things. I'm just glad the, the Lord saved me out of that. <laughs> I don't what made know. Dennis Holman so good? Well, I don't know. I, I, I think growing up as a youngster in muscle shows, you know, that's all we did. Uh, come home from school, we had our chores to do after that. We went up, went out, chose sides, and played ball, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, depending on what. Uh, and I was the youngest guy in my group, so I had to try harder. I had to work harder to compete with some of the older guys, my older brothers and, and uh, their friends and that kind of thing. So I made up my mind when I was 14 that I was going to the university and play ball uh, and told my parents that. And uh, Speaking of your parents, your parents, if my memory serves me correctly, celebrated either their 70th, I want to say 75th wedding anniversary on Cooper & Company when we were in the Shoals area like in 98, 99, Keith, is that about right? Somewhere around in there, 2000? Yeah. And your dad passed fifth. away at a, almost 101? <clears throat> he passed away in 2008. He was 12 days shy of 101. But to celebrate 75 years and hadn't put up with you as a kid, that's a... <laughs> Quite a deal. So when you get to Alabama, I mean, is it a dream come true? Uh, it's just awesome. You know, I mean, just uh, I remember the first time I walked on that field and the first time I saw Coach Brown out there, it was just like I hadn't gone to heaven or something. I mean, he was that big, you know, uh, uh, and had such an influence and impact on players, not, not just players, but that whole town, the whole state. I mean, he was the only person that I would see walk into a room and it would just completely go silent. It, it, I've never seen... A lot of people do that with me without going out to the back door. <laughs> Were you ever scared of him? Scared to death. I was more afraid of him than I was a barrel full of rattlesnakes. Uh, I wanted to please him. You wanted to do everything just right. You know, you didn't want to do anything that would upset him. And uh, I think that's what made us successful because that's what we strive every day to uh, please him and to get better, and that's what he wanted. What was your record the three years you played there? We lost three games. 
three games in three seasons. Yeah. Two national championships. Yeah. And should have had a third, but should've. they. I got was that a, the tie? The got that on the, is that the 10 -10 tie? missing ring right there. That's, that's it right there, the missing oh, ring. These rings. All right, what is this one? This is the 1965 National Championship. That's the missing ring. That should have been three national champs, championships in a row. That was 64, 65, 66, where we were the only undefeated college in the nation. Is that nation. when they tied 10-10? to 10, no Right. That's, that's it. And we didn't get it. That's the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame ring that I got. This ring probably means as much to me as any of them. This was the one that Coach Bryant gave his seniors. And inside the ring is engraved to Dennis Holman from Paul Bryant. So that, that means quite a bit to me. This was the uh, Super Bowl ring where we played the Baltimore Colts in uh, Super Bowl V. And this is a, uh, an antique here. This is the old World Football League. I played two years in the World Football League, and we won the first World Football League championship in, uh, out of Birmingham. So that's, that's that ring. I have a collection of wedding bands similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> you won't do. All right, you, we've got a photo back here. But I remember this game, 7-3. to three, <clears throat> We beat Auburn. Sorry, Brad. Uh, Kenny Staper runs in the mud for, what, 40-something yard touchdown? Or what was it, if I remember? Right, it was about 40 yards. Here you are laying down. I just made a block. You see these two guys laying out here? Yeah. I made a block right there, knocked those two guys down, and... Uh, Kenny scored the winning touchdown. It, it, it was funny, before this game, Coach Bryant, he, he, he had an unbelievable way of, of sizing up how a game was going to go. And it was tornado weather outside, been raining. We had six inches of mud on Iron Legion Bowl. Field uh, at, at the Iron Bowl. But Coach Bryant tells us before we go out, and he said, this is the way it's going to happen. Said it's going to be a game on the ground. There's going to be two or three plays that's going to decide this game. That's it. It's not going to be a high scoring game. Won't be a lot of balls thrown. No, it's going to be two or three plays. And this was the one that won the game and beat them seven to three. So that's Did you catch it. a pass in that game? I think I caught one. It, I, I bet we didn't throw five passes that game. Uh, it, it was awful. You couldn't get a good foothold, you know, out there. It was just unbelievable. It's probably the worst playing conditions I've ever been in. Do you ever talk to Kenny much anymore? I do. I talked to him probably a, a little over a month ago. Uh, Kenny's still a free spirit, you know, and, and just uh, trying to decide what he wants to do when he grows up. But uh, always a good guy. We always had good, good relationship. And it helped us rooming together because we would go over different things. Snake knew exactly what I was going to do, when I was going to do it. I knew what he was going to do, and, and, and we worked quite a bit, talked about it uh, there in the room. So it helped us, I think, uh, be successful. What are you most proud of in playing ball at the University of Alabama? Well, I think the point is, you know, you go through uh, four years, and, and including my freshman year, uh, the varsity there, they went undefeated. We lost three games in the next three years. Uh, I think being associated with those players that uh, accomplish something that can't be taken away from you and, and going through a period of time where I think the mid-60s were three great years, four great years at the University of Alabama. Being associated with Coach Bryant, uh, being around him, being taught by him, learning things from him, I think I've carried over in life. You know, you, you, nothing comes free. You have to work for it. You, you know, you have to have a plan and, and, and work that plan, you know. And uh, he taught us so many things just in the game of football that later on we applied to life. And uh, I, I don't think I could have gone to another school, played with another coach and another team that could have made me more successful. The field at Muscle Shoals is named after you. What does that make you feel like? Very humble. Very humble. Uh, when they called me and told me about that, I... You know, I said, there's so many players that came out of there. You know, he said, yeah, but you're the first one. And uh, uh, was able to go on and play professional ball, too. But uh, it was just very humbling. And every time I go by there, you know, you know the greatest feeling I get? My grandkids now, when I take them over there, they want to go over there and see it. I mean, it's just a great feeling. I mean, looking at you, you about my size, it's hard to imagine that you once were in the NFL. And I see the way those guys get beat up on now. Or in Bama, I mean, Bama looks like an NFL team. Granted, I'm a Bama fan, and I say that, but <laughs> some dudes are big now. They are big, Jamie, and, and I, I guess it's all, you know, back, we had a few players in the NFL that were, were big size, but they would probably be small compared to the players that are playing today, you know, and I, 
I don't know if it's hormones in the foods or whatever that's going on, but players are just bigger now, you know, and uh, I'd hate to, uh, you know, uh, they were big enough getting hit back then. Well, I can't uh, imagine today. You're just a little bit over 65. You're in great shape. Playing golf a lot. You told me you only Play picked golf. up golf 10 years ago. That's right. Play, picked it up after I retired uh, and uh, enjoy it. <clears throat> Mostly I enjoy the fellowship I have with buddies I play with. I have a great time. You go to many Bama games or you sit home with uh, your wife and watch them on TV? I try to make a game a year, you know, just to maybe see some of my former teammates that come in. But uh, I'd rather be in front of that big 65 and, <laughs> and be HD watching it on TV. And right, and watch it on TV and, and uh, get to go. Uh, what is your uh, fondest moment of playing ball for the University of Alabama? I think probably, uh, you know, the two national championships you won. Uh, it's probably the fondest memories uh, that I have. Uh, but the ones that I remember the most, Jamie, to be honest with you, uh, are the three games we lost. Uh, you know, uh, we paid for it. Who beat us? The next week. Georgia beat us on the last play in my sophomore year on a little flea flicker. And uh, we got back to Tuscaloosa. And uh, Manager came in, Brian Hall, knocking on the door, got us up. We were on the practice field on Sunday morning at 5 o'clock. Get out. We practiced twice a week the rest of that week uh, until the next game. And I never will forget the speech that Coach Bryant gave us, and it was on Thursday morning. And we were telling the assistant coach, said, we are worn out. We can't, you know, we got a game Saturday. How are we going to play? We've been practicing twice a day. Well, Coach Bryant calls us up Thursday morning on the practice field, and he said, well, I hear you're tired. And we knew we'd been ratted out by the coaches, you know. And so he gives this speech, and I can remember it just like it was yesterday. He said, well, I'm tired too. He said, we can either take that tombstone that we collected over in Georgia and make a stepping stone out of it, or we can lie down and die. As for me, I've been here before. I'm going on. If you don't want to go with me, there's the gate. Get out. And you still remember verbatim practically that We time. went undefeated the rest of the year and won the national championship that year. But it was that speech that Thursday morning that I think turned, turned our season around. I had the pleasure of interviewing when I was at 31 and just a cameraman basically, but when the sports guy couldn't go. And I would be scared to death. Hey, I can understand. What are you going to ask me something else? <laughs> you know, Bear Brown and I have one thing in common you probably don't realize. We're the only you were two from guys know that wrestled a bear. I did mine on live TV in 1980. Still have the video to prove it. About dang kill me, but I mean, uh, I wasn't too smart. I never claimed to be smart, but that's my only thing. Yeah, I wore white shoes in high school because of Joe Namath. Uh, got knee injuries, don't think I got in common with him. Uh, but dang, well Dennis, you've had a great career. I know you're a great Christian guy now. We love seeing you in Athens when you can make it over and uh, stuff like that. And, and what do you predict for Alabama football this year and the next couple of years? What do you see with Coach Saban? Well, I think we're on the right track. You know, as I said earlier, I think. How many uh, championships can we win? Well, we've got a shot every year. You know, I think as long as Coach Saban's there, is, is, is the mindset that he has, the mindset that he, 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 he tries to relate to the team, you got a shot every year. You know, and I, I, I promise you, you're going to see some players this year you haven't heard of that are going to step into the starting lineup and are going to be great players because. Yeah. We, we've gotten some great recruiting classes the last several years. If you could change anything about what you did in your career, what would it be? Hmm. You know, Jamie, I really can't think of a lot. I, uh, the Lord has been so good to me, and I, I think he, he, he allowed me to do, to, to fulfill my dream and to go through some of those things so that now uh, that I'm a Christian, and I have opportunities to speak out for him that uh, I wouldn't have had that chance unless I'd been in the situations that I've been in with Alabama and with Dallas and Kansas City and those teams, you know, that I get a chance to talk to different people about the Lord, and, 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 and that's great. And I think he gave me that opportunity because of that. Drew Brees just got a contract for like $20 million, $25 million a year. He'll make 40 this first year, guaranteed. When they paid you in the NFL, what kind of money, big money did you make? Made thirty thousand dollars. I was a first round draft choice. Thirty thousand. Yeah, and thought I'd stolen blind. <laughs> and thirty thousand back in '68. You know that was pretty good money. 
But, uh, you know, today it's just unbelievable, the money that they get. And, and, and that money's guaranteed. I mean, most of the time you're talking 20 to 30 yeah. million dollars, and they don't even have to put on a job strap. They get hurt, they're still getting paid. A absolutely. That's yeah. it. So, uh, well, Dennis, roll tide, buddy. Always Jamie. one of my favorite people. Gloria says, tell you hello. Well, you Boy, you have a question? A&M in Missouri, Dennis. Oh, he wants to ask you about A&M in Missouri being in the SEC. I'm very surprised. You know, I'm... I'm Shut up, Keith. I'm asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> that they're there. They're two great teams. And people are always asking me, why did they come into the SEC or why did the SEC allow them to come in? You know, bottom line, I think when it gets down to it, it's money. And it's That's it. And, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what are you going to do from here on out? Well, I'm going to do what I'm told. I finally learned that after 44 years. You know, it's a lot easier that way. And uh, just keep going on, growing up with my grandkids, being a part of their life. And... Uh, Loving my wife, loving the Lord, and just uh, doing what I need to do. Thank you for your time again before we were in. Thank you. By the Swami. Tell sweet glory, hello. I'll do it. Dennis Holman, one of the all-time great you, buddy. Alabama football players. Thank you.